All right, we're going to do an update here, but I'm going to need you guys to bear with me. Um, my computer is still packed down. I'm using what I call my Franken book. It's a notebook, but it's put together with pieces from a laptop and a, a netbook and a notebook, and it's just, I don't have a mouse on it, so I, it's hard to use Stellarium from a laptop, okay? So just bear with me. I'm going to do what I can. You can't scroll out in different stuff. And I don't know the hotkeys on this. But I do want to keep everybody informed on what's going on. Uh, Mercury still in retrograde. And boy, boy, am I feeling that. A few more days. I can't wait till it turns around. But we've got the Saturn-Pluto issue going on. And I've been telling you people about earthquakes and earthquakes where you wouldn't expect them and that will intensify. And we won't see the brunt of that until Mars joins Saturn. When Mars crosses into Capricorn with Saturn, then you're going to feel the full effect of uh, what Saturn and a Mars conjunction can do in an Earth sign, especially in Cardinal Earth. Uh, we've been rocking and rolling all year long for the past year with this Saturn-Jupiter uh, mess with Pluto going on in Sagittarius. And it really ramped up when Jupiter came into Sagittarius, which Jupiter rules Sagittarius. Uh, Jupiter here is what we would call Zeus, right? Uh, it is opposite the age of Gemini. And in the age of Gemini, or Mercury as Buddha, we have Buddha in the Oriental or Eastern part of the world. And we have the Greek, or Zeus, in the Western part of the world. You can always look to its opposite, and everything is divided East and West. Boy, I could talk just about five videos on that alone because that plays right into our Pisces Virgo, right? Um, you got Jupiter ruling Pisces and you got Mercury ruling Virgo. But at the end of the age of Pisces, at its death, uh, Peter is crucified upside down. So they actually switch places and we're in that stage now. I would say we came into that stage over a hundred years ago, uh, before World War I. Uh, and it was solidified with Jupiter in Pisces as the Vatican. This is, I, I literally refer to this star right here as the Vatican. Uh, this just popped into my head, but I got asked the question, where is the lake of fire in the zodiac? There are only three fire signs. That is Leo, fixed fire. Um, Aries, cardinal fire, the purifier. But the lake of fire, they use the word lake on purpose to, to designate mutable, right? Water in its mutable state or matter in its mutable liquid state. So liquid fire. And that is indeed Sagittarius. Uh, I've explained before that when we leave the age of Pisces, we're coming into an age of Aquarius that is referred to as world without end. Uh, that because it goes straight into the next age. It is the only world without end because it goes right into the next world age of Capricorn and these two are one ruled by Saturn. And uh, at this time, many will go to sleep, and they won't wake up again to the end of this, and they will be in the lake of fire. Recycling, reborn, uh, just moving from the mutable cross to the mutable cross, right? Those on the mutable cross who do not graduate, who do not go from adept to master, uh, they have to wait and then repeat the cycle in the 
the lake of fire, or Sagittarius. Um, in the Old Testament, Sagittarius is the constellation of let there be light. Uh, God created um, the heavens, Aquarius, and the earth, and it was good. And it became void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And God said, let there be light, and it was good. But that light became bad, okay? We know the Greek tells. Uh, it'll help you if you learn the names of the characters and the constellations in the different tongues. Now, I have done a lot of that work, especially the names of the planets in the different tongues. You can find that. Um, it should be below every video. Maybe for the last several, I haven't posted in the description box uh, because I'm kind of in transit. I'm still in between. I'm everywhere and nowhere. So um, I don't have access to that. It's inconvenient for me to do it. Planetary linguistics. Go back to one of my other videos. Just go down in the description box and you'll find that link. And I also done videos on the Inside 33 archive. You will find that there um, where I do the names of the planets and the constellations through uh, Google Translate before they scrubbed it and etymology online before it was scrubbed so thankfully all that is still there you can no longer find that information online i am shocked planetary linguistics is still there but they've got other things to deal with right now than little old me and learning about language there are too few of us out there who are coming at this problem from a linguistic value, which is really to me the most important because that's where they cast the spell. From the beginning, man, mankind is controlled by information, knowledge, and they present that to us through language. And for ages, only the elite were, a were able to know the symbols or the languages. They were the only ones that could read and write the rest of the people were kept dumbed down. Well, in the past mm, hundred years, it's been worldwide education. Everybody is getting educated in some form of language and a symbolic alphabet, okay? And they are busy, busy perverting the symbols, and then they have their own encoded languages, uh, which I discovered in art that they've always spoke to each other in art because even in the mystery schools they're that they're the hidden ones the mystery schools but even within them within their own ranks uh, they don't know who is above them uh, they don't know what the great work is they don't know what's going on everything is compartmentalized and specialized so it's you don't work your way up the ladder you get tapped up the ladder in these schools they're very wrong and perverted but it is the language from the beginning the scribes scribbled the scriptures and nobody could read after that everybody had a different tongue before that we had one language and it was this language it was the language of the stars it was the language of the symbols of alchemy and those still exist around the world and it exists in art so you must know once you learn to read the alchemical sim symbols you can bust through any language you can go through all the art around the world through all time and you can see what is truly being presented because you've been lied to about what the symbols mean and that they even have a meaning that every symbol has a meaning everyone every every dot iota yo tilde it all has a meaning so lake of fire is going to be mutable fire it's built into it it's explaining itself you just got to think about it for a minute moon in its own house of cancer today time is in its early morning probably be out of there it will probably be in leo 
by the time this video is uploaded. Uh, later today, it will move there. You can just come on, cooperate. So earthquakes going on, but these are a little mild. What you're feeling is just that Saturn Pluto going on right there. Uh, the big hit will come when Mars comes over here. And then you'll feel that for a while. You'll feel that for quite a while. And I have Mars and Saturn in my first house. And it's been, my life has just been one rampant earthquake after another. We have, uh, today is the 7th. Uh, we officially move into Pisces on the 12th. So five days of Aquarius left. And then the sun will move into Pisces. Venus conjunct Uranus. Uh, that's going to be in Aries. So Venus is no longer in Pisces. Venus is no longer exalted. Venus is conjunct Uranus, uh, which is the heart, Venus, and the conscience mind. So your mind is going to be on your heart. And they're both in a state of cardinal fire which is purification. It's time to purify your not just your mind, but your heart. Use your heart to purify your mind. Use your mind to purify your heart. Let them work together, right? Because Venus rules the opposite house of cardinal air in Libra. Uranus rules no house. Neptune rules no house. Pluto rules no house in alchemy. I don't care what the other ones say. A lot of you come to me, Uranus rules Aquarius. Okay, if that's what you want to believe and that works for you, that's great. If you want to live in that paradigm of tropical astrology or western astrology, you're free to do so because there are three different paradigms going on right now. You're given the choice of two, eastern astrology or western astrology. That's the only choices you are given. I have found the third path, and it is alchemical astrology, which goes right up the middle. There is no sun pillar. There is no moon pillar. It all belongs to the higher self of Saturn. This is Saturn's circle. Saturn rules astrology and alchemy in Aquarius. Aquarius is about alchemy, which is karma which is you reap what you sow, the law of equivalent exchange. In Eastern astrology, there are the God of the Old Testaments, the Ten Commandments. All that's moon astrology, lunar astrology. Uh, it's feminine, even though you have this masculine God there. Uh, and so is Pisces being flipped. You have this that same dynamic going on. Now, I'm gonna, I don't know if this is gonna work, but I'm gonna try. I want to show you what the Cairo is. This is a symbol of the mutable cross. This is a symbol of the fixed cross. And this is a symbol of the cardinal cross. Now, this age is ruled by this cross, but they done this. And you need to know what that is. That the mutable age, what that means, that line down the middle, is the mutable age has always been ruled by the previous cardinal age and the Babylonian priesthood. And it's Aries and Libra. It is emotion and the heart. And we, love is freaking blind in this age. We, and they use our love against us. They use our emotions against us because we're all adepts in this age. We're all just children. That's why you're called the children of God, right? And uh, you notice a lot of them, they don't like to be called kids, kids. Well, in the ancient tradition, this is not just a goat. It is a baby goat. It's female. Capricorn is a female baby goat called a kid, a kid. In the Old Testament, this is the first creation, and it's a kid. Um, now we see that the wheel has spun around from the different perspective. Now she's an old, black, 
nanny goat. She's an old black woman. You'll see her represented in a lot of things. The Stand, Stephen King. Um, the Matrix as the Oracle. But remember, she's two parts. She, she's, she's not whole without the one. They are one. That should give you a whole new dynamic on that who manifests who, right? In the beginning, heaven is created before earth. And the beginning is only one circle. A circle has, we're told a circle has no beginning and no end, but that is freaking not true. A circle always has a beginning and an end, and they never quite meet. It's never exactly perfect. It is the Ouroboros, the snake that eats its own tail. And that's what happens here. Uh, it eats itself. The, the age of Pisces is literally eating itself. Especially upside down. It makes me wonder, is the tail going to consume the head this time? Instead of the head consuming the tail. So, um, you know, everybody's welcome to choose whatever astrology you want. I look at all three. I look at the Vedic, sidereal. I'll look at the tropical, western. and um, But I'm always in the middle. I glean whatever information I can from both sides. But I pull the two sides together and look at it alchemically. And then you're, you can easily dismiss what I call the hoopla, the emotional embedding that shouldn't be there. There should be no emotion involved in it. Yeah, even though Mars is all about emotion, when looking at the stars and interpreting it, uh, to have an emotional reaction means that you have Mars on the sun pillar or Mars on the moon pillar. When you, you need Mars in the center, you need all of them in the center. You need to pull them all to the fixed cross. And, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I've actually had strep throat. And I'm just now really getting over it. Um, the last video I did, let's take a break right here and talk about the experiment I did. Because that was really eye-opening to me. I learned a lot. And let me tell you what I learned. Let me tell you about some of the information that I gleaned from your responses. Uh, the first day, I was kind of disappointed because every response I got, 99% of the responses I got, you were telling me about what you saw your sun, whether it was rising or setting or not at all or both or many. Uh, basically, what I was doing there is what they do in the ink block test. The ink block test determines your subconscious. And so you must have the first response. When I done the ink block test, I just straight up told him, this is hard for me. Because when you show me that picture, I don't see one thing. I see many things all at once. And so he said, okay, you have many things all at once. We'll put them in the order of which came first and give me the first one. And so that's what I did. I realized that, okay, I can just just single it down to the very first image out of a series of images that just popped into my head. And it's not easy. You really have to focus and shut everything out around you to isolate in your mind to find that one image. But I didn't even want the answer to that. That was for you to determine for yourself. What I wanted was the answer to the second question, which was, where is the light coming from that illuminates the inside of your mind that produces pictures in your mind's eye? I got some excellent answers. Uh, it took a few days for everybody to catch up and watch but then they started coming in. And I was hoping a lot of you would catch it. How many of you actually got it? Because it told me how many of you actually understand what I'm doing here. And are you paying attention? And I got very, I maybe got a handful of answers 
out of over, I don't know how many, uh, of what you thought that was. And everyone that answered the question pretty much got it right. One, we're already told, I am the truth, I am the way, and I am the light. Um, we are told that we are the light of the world. Actually, it is you that illuminates that. Now, me, myself, and my experience of uh, being a conscious entity, uh, I have memory pre-body, before I was in the body. And I'm aware that before I was in the body, I could see. But I had no mind, no brain, no mind, no head, no mind's eye to project on but i saw nonetheless that's what makes me think we're inside the mind of god that what we see as the stars are ourselves you are a star in the heaven and you are projecting down here in this body that you're in you are the light it's above you and it's within you as above so below Wherever you find yourself in the heavens, that's where you are. Now our light, to make a 3D image, you have more than one light. You have seven. That's right, you have seven lights. And it is your chakra system. Uh, one person said, my light comes from my heart. And very adamant about that. And I agree, yes, we have a heart light. Uh, so now the question is not which light are you using? Which light is focused? Are you focusing? Because we can swap between lights or perspectives. Uh, mine has always been real neutral. Uh, I know that I exist in a dark place in the back left-hand side of the brain. And to open my eyes, I had to center myself in the brain. I had to move from what felt like the back left of a cave over up into the middle to be able to look out the eyes, to open the eyes and see out of the body. But I know the goal, when I opened my third eye, I had gone to completely to the right side of the brain. And everything I heard speaking to me was coming from behind my right ear. And I knew where I was in the cave, right? I can close my eyes and go into Plato's cave immediately. I'm, I'm very trained myself to do that. It's my safe place. That's where I go in my mind. And I look around and I can't see the light because I am the light. So your thalamus activates the pineal gland or the projector. It's the projector. And it projects on the mind, the mind's eye. The pineal gland is the mind's eye. The thalamus. And it, it's a, it's a light. It's a doorway. Uh, the sun is not what we think it is. To me, the sun is the projector. It's projecting everything down here. The moon is like the mirror and a telescope. You can't look at the light. So you look at the reflection of the light through the lens and the mirror in the telescope. It reflects it. It's a reflection. Interesting word, flexion. To flect. Uh, it's like respect is to look again. To respect somebody is you make a spectacle. You spectate them. You spec. You look. You wear specs, right? You gotta look again. Put on glasses and look again. <coughs> Respect. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Now. Oh, please don't start that. I don't know what goes on there. Mercury's still in retrograde. The heart conjunct the conscience mind in cardinal fire, the fire of purification. Neptune still in... Aquarius getting ready to move into Pisces. A big dynamic change there because Neptune is going to be the imagination. Let's see if we can get and 
Our imagination is one of the most powerful things here. Sun conjunct Neptune in Aquarius. So now we have the sun combust the imagination. So uh, everybody's going to think on a Mercurian. Your Mercury is your logic and intelligence. Your imagination is uh, combust of the sun. Your Uranus is combust of your heart. Your Pluto is combust of your higher self, Saturn. So all the parts of our mind right now are our higher, our conscious mind, Uranus, our subconscious mind, Pluto, and our imagination, Neptune, all three are being influenced, restricted by our hearts, our sun, and our higher self. They're all being influenced, controlled, combust, means, combust means, uh, it is a debilitation or a weakness, a withholding that comes from outside of yourself. So right now we know the outside of ourselves are Saturn, our higher selves, Venus, our heart, and then the sun which is your power center, your projector, your energy source, you, yourself. So all three of them are being influenced right now with a Mercury retrograde. Not a good time to make a decision. Not a good time to sign a contract or get into anything. This is so overwhelmingly manipulative. It, we're being, they're using one, Venus, our hearts against us. They're used, uh, the only thing we got in our favor is Saturn conjunct the Pluto. That we do have our higher self. I look at this as Saturn is protecting Pluto at this point. point. Um, it's protecting the collective subconscious. Because this is not just us individually. Your natal chart is you individually. But this is us as a collective. I'm speaking as humanity, everybody that breathes on earth as a collective. And we have a collective subconscious, Pluto. And right now, Saturn's got that upper hand on it. But Jupiter's moving in hard and heavy. And Mars is working with Jupiter right now in Jupiter's house over here in Sagittarius. So these two, desire and emotion, are are coming fixing to come into play in Capricorn with Saturn and Pluto. Then we're going to see, then it's going to start getting ugly. Just wait. I've been getting a lot of questions about, I don't even know what to call it to keep this from getting banned. Um, Arona K. Iris Bay, 19. Uh, alchemically, you can uh, do... Arona K is um, carnivorous, carnivore, all of those go in there. Um, it's the outer layer of the sun. You have a corona in your eye, in your mind's eye, your heart. Um, it's, it, the word itself really just means outer layer. It's like the crown. You put the crown on top of your head. A corona is a crown. You wear it on your head. Um, so it's not the head per se, but it's a covering. You put it over your head. So it's an outer covering. Like I said, I remember being inside the sun. It's dark in there. The light expression is on the outside, not the inside. It's dark inside the sun. You've all been in there if you just don't remember uh, just like your, you was in your, your body, your body was in your mother's womb in the darkness. And it came out into the light. The light's on the outside of the womb. Well, the same thing with your soul or your consciousness. Um, it's out there in a star, in a cluster, in a nebula, being born. And then that light transferred data, just like fiber optics, into the sun. You go in the sun, it's dark, you whirl around, you can actually feel the inertia. And then you jump on another light beam and you go out and you 
come to some planet, some body, some, some matter. We, we descend into lower matter. And you inhabit that. You project yourself in it. You know, I've heard a lot of people say, you chose your parents. No, you might have as a recycled, but your conscience, consciousness can only download into an organism, an organic thing that is on the same frequency as the conscience. Some consciousness will download as a tree. They're, that's a very slow, low vibration. Trees can live a long time because they're a slow vibration. Where well, we live on a day-to-day -day cycle, right? We uh, The sun comes up and down and we sleep every 24 hours. You know, we're taking a break in there. A tree cycle is what we would say is one day. For a tree is one year. Their day is winter, spring, summer, fall. Uh, they do. They shed their leaves annually, where we shed daily every time. We we sleep daily. They sleep once a year. They sleep in the winter when they shed their leaves. They wake up in the spring. So their timeline cycle, their frequency is low. It's slow. Uh, the faster the vibration, the higher the consciousness. So the higher you vibrate, the that's what you're going to download into. Uh, you can download into animals or plants or all matter. All matter. To me, like when the Christ was coming into, let's come back over here to cancer. He was coming into Jerusalem and they were waving the palms and screaming Hosanna and he came in on the donkeys. In the Arabic, Cancer is the donkeys. So he's riding into the city on the donkeys. They're waving the the flags. Northern donkey, left hand corner. Southern donkey, here. So these two stars are the donkeys. Or I like to call them the Don Key. And you'll also understand why the Republican Party, I mean the Democratic Party rides a donkey. Now, so he comes in, uh, and the, the priest, the Babylonian priesthood, dressed as the Jewish priesthood, tells him that they need to shut, he needs to shut these people up. And he said, you know, well, you know, if I, if I shut them up, if they shut up, the very rocks will cry out. So you can incarnate into a rock if your vibration is that low. I call that the sleep. If you're just vibrating into dirt or rock or stone, then you're just sleep. Uh, I under, also understand the entrapment of water. Um, cancer is cardinal water. It's the most high of water, ruled by the moon that rules water. And the feminine pillar. All right, so our souls can be trapped in water. Any, any, within the water is like on earth. Uh, you have different classes of people, different races of people. Uh, we have a lot in common, but we have many different blood types and many different genetic makeups. Well, the same thing goes on in the sea. Uh, in the sea, some of the fish lay eggs. Some of them have babies. They don't lay eggs at all. They have a womb like the mother does here. We consider dolphins and whales to be of higher intelligence. They're at a higher frequency. But those souls are trapped in that water. And they cannot get out of that water until it is done. We're told about that day where the sea gives up the dead. And so if you die in the ocean, then you're like I drowned in the swimming pool and one of the first things I became aware of was that, wow, I'm trapped in this freaking water. I couldn't project outside of the water. The light cannot project outside of the water. That's why you're trapped in the body. That's why when women get older and go through menopause and they start throwing off all that water, become hysterical, 
because their body's trying to adjust to no water, and they become extreme, some can become oracles and extremely, they become empaths and all kind of stuff at the end of their life. They can start at some, some, it's like right before your death, a few days before your death, a lot of people talk about how they see people that have already died. They now see them. They're standing right there. You don't, but they do. It's because they're in less water, and now they are being able to project out of the water and also see out of the water. You know, when you're down in the swimming pool and you're looking up, the images above are wavy, and you can't, you can see there's a person there, but you can't make out that face or who it is. All right? A bunch of people around the pool, unless you recognize a color of a bathing suit or somebody's hair color, you're not going to be able to identify who's at the top of the pool looking back at you. So water there. So he comes in on the donkeys and the rocks cry out. That's telling us just how deep consciousness can manifest into this physical realm. And that all consciousness is manifest here in this whatever you want to call it. To me, the universe, the one verse, is a closed construct. It is, we're inside of one mind, one. And each mind has a left hemisphere and a right hemisphere. A masculine side and a feminine side, but it's one brain, one person, one um, consciousness, but broken into many pieces. Our, 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 our heart literally breaks our mind into a piece, and uh, our consciousness into a piece. Our mind, Mercury, our logical mind, breaks it into a piece. Our, our conscious mind, Uranus, breaks it into a piece. Uh, we have a zodiac in our head. And all the pieces in the head control the body. The body is nothing without the head. The brain controls every organ in the body. So the part that controls your heart is really in your head. It's not actually in your heart. Um, and they talk back and forth. They're one. The, the conscious, the zodiac sign in your head wherever your Venus is, is going to talk to your heart. They're split, just like your left and right mind. It, to me, you have to bring those two together. Or the zodiac in your mind, my Venus, I'm born with my Venus right here in the belly of Aquarius. So I need, when Venus comes over here, that's great. But now Venus, is she's moving further and further away from my heart. She's in the purification state, and she's on my conscious mind, and has been. My heart's been there for, for several days now, and I, I wasn't even aware till I took a look. I thought she was still in Pisces, but definitely on my mind. All right. I've got another question about the mouth of the fish. Oh, my goodness. I cannot tell you how many videos I've done on this. The mouth of the fish is the Aztec, not Mayan calendar. He's got a fish tongue. His tongue is a fish. That's symbolic of mouth, fish. You can throw away the of and the the because it never existed in the alchemical language. Um, language has grown. Let me tell you what I learned about language. Languages all started out as an alchemical language. One, we didn't have pronouns. Everything was it. There was no he, there was no she. If it was feminine or masculine, it was built into the proper noun, the title. It was built, the, the femininity and masculinity was built into the noun. Western language took that away. And every noun was neutral. It was non-gendered. And now you added the gender by he, or she, him and her. Um, completely different words for masculine and feminine. Mother, father, right? This language is broken. So, where we have one word as parents, parents, 
and we put the S. If, to make it many, just add the S. But also, uh, language, to me, when it moved from the Arabic into the Greek through what we call Hebrew, uh, Hebrew is a mix of the fire feminine language of Arabic and the block masculine angular language of Greek, and it's a blend of the two. It's the coming of the two, how they met in the middle because some of the letters are curvy, fire, and some of them are block, Greek. But this language here added a new feature to, to sentence structure, and it was what we call the article. The, the, a, 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 a singular. All articles, a and the, became meaning singular, or one. So, God is now the, T-H-E, we say, but they said L. But it still means one. It means singular, and it's neither masculine or feminine. They try to tell you, like Allah, A-L means above, L-A means below. A-L above is mas mas masculine, L-A below is feminine. The sky is masculine, and the earth is feminine. This is what uh, the Native Americans would say. And as above, so below. But we're in such a confusing time. Uh, we've, we've spent a minimum from the flood, the age of cancer and the Gemini, being dumbed down, uneducated, enslaved. We have not we have been so against nature. What it, it has, nature itself, what we're taught is survival of the fittest. Uh, but, and that is, the fittest is whether you're fit in body or you're fit in mind. Hence, brain over brawn. And the priesthood were the brains. They decided brain won out over brawn. And they were willing to take the gamble and the long shot, and that they, they could dumb us all down to control us. The war that is going on is for your hearts and your minds, for your Venus and your Mercury, because Mercury rules com commerce and your mind, your logical, and, uh, your intellect, how smart you can actually be, and and they're flipping that right now on its head in Virgo, to Pisces. Once you learn all the planets, how they're connected to your chakras, you can see, just by looking at the zodiac, what's going on with me? What's going on with me right now? Me, I'm waiting on Mars to come on over and join Saturn. I got Saturn in my first house, and Pluto in my first house, so I'm heavily being ruled by my higher self and my subconscious. My conscious mind is over here trying to purify itself with its heart, just like everybody else. We're all doing the same thing, but we react in a different way depending on what our natal chart is. Some people's natal chart, their Venus is here now. So it's a homecoming to them. They feel good about that Venus in Aries. It's there. They were born with that. It, it's that's what they were born to do to have that fiery, passionate heart that just and it can be overdone because this is a cardinal sign. You can love somebody too much and smother them, you know, just burn them to the ground. So, being on that cardinal cross, you have to watch that power and to know what it feels like. And that's how you pick up your cross and follow him daily, daily. And you'll know what all is going on. Uh, another one. Here's a good one. Shiva. Shiva. And so much misconstruction with that. Don't look at this as two people and tell me what you see. And tell me what does that have to do with Saturn and all the propaganda that's put out when that's Mercury's mutable house. They show you in the India, and I swear the it, from the India, from India, the Vedic, 
it's just like this. Uh, it's the same thing as CERN, the thing at CERN. Look at it. Look at it. But you know, the, theirs only has one head, right? One head. You have to be able to read the image. You have to look through it. So now <clears throat> what they're telling you is Kali or Shiva. No, 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 no. That's Mercury. That's Gemini. You're it, and like an iPad goat too, where the he's doing the Shiva dance, right? Doing the Kali dance there on top of the pillar at the fire pit. He's at a fire pit. Fire, fire, mutable fire, transmutation fire, Gemini, and he's doing the Kali dance. And this is that character. That's Mercury. And he keeps changing masks. He keeps showing you that he's somebody else around the world. I'm Buddha. I'm Kali. I'm this. I'm that. Now, they want to attribute Kali to Saturn. Not so. That's Bible Bibble Babble. Learn your alchemy and the symbols and you'll see who's who. That's Little Boy Blue. And I've already told you who Little Boy Blue is freaking Mercury. Little boy blue come blow your horn. The sheep's in the meadow. The cow is in the corn. Uh, Mercury is the messenger. Mercury has the horn. Mercury blows the horn. The whistle. He's also the whistleblower. He's the blue man group. There is no blue on the medicine wheel. It's red, yellow, black, and white. There are no such thing as naturally born brown people. It's not red, yellow, black, white, and brown. The word Arab, Ereb, from the Hebrew means mixed. They are mixed from Taurus and Gemini, from India and Africa. India, Africa, the mix. Ed makes brown. Uh, Africa mixing with Europe. You got redheads. Don't hate me. My grandmother looks like Wilma Flintstone without the bone. Flaming red hair. Yeah. Curls, curly hair. You have to have African bloodline. India, purebred, black hair, straight. The Orient, black hair, straight. Native Americans, black hair, straight. Um, the Europeans, the white people, the Europeans, they had brown hair, straight, blonde hair, straight. The curl comes in with the mix, the ered, the mixing of the races, the hybrids. And like I'm a hybrid, I'm a hybrid from a straight brown hair and straight black hair. So my hair is super straight. Uh, Europe and the Native Americans. But you get a little curl in there and your genetics somewhere along the line has an African spiral to it. What makes your hair the difference between straight and curly are your hair follicles. If your follicle is oval, you get a curly hair. If your follicle is perfectly round, then you get straight hair. And that's why it's in your genetics. And there's nothing you can do about it. You know, people with straight hair like me were forever trying to put a curl in it. Uh, I, perm, don't work on me. I'm just throwing money away. I, I, my hair's straight before I walk out of the salon. It's ridiculous. Um, and then people with curly hair are forever trying to make it straight. Uh, we're never happy with who we are. We feel flawed. Question is, why is that? Because we've been lied to and we've been told we're flawed. When we're not. You can perfect yourself. You are what you see yourself as. Not what others see you as. We're so busy trying to make other people happy about who we are. Instead of making ourselves happy about who we are. You can become whatever you want. We're in a freaking mutable age of mutable water. And it don't get any harder than the last deacon of Pisces, period. 
upside down, mutable water. It's like we don't have a chance in hell of getting out of here, of fixing this mess. But we do. But unfortunately, not everybody's going to make it out of the water. They're not going to get out of the water. You have to, I guess, become a dolphin to where the dolphin jumps out of the water, right? The dolphin can breathe the air. You have to come out of water into air. Become from the adept to the master. And the first thing you have to do to do this is control three things. And that's Venus, Mercury, and Mars. You got to get a control of your heart, get a control of your logic, and get a control of your emotions. You put them in check, and you do that by using your higher self, your Saturn, by manipulating your own subconscious, Pluto, by putting Jupiter in freaking check, which are your desires. Make them come in a line under Saturn, which is what's going to occur. That's what this Saturn-Jupiter conjunction about is about this year. It's because Saturn has been demonized and set aside. Well, now it's time for Jupiter to get a taste of its own medicine. And now your desires need to, not need to, they will come under the control of the higher self and be influenced by the collective subconscious Pluto, which is exactly what they're banking on with Pluto being there. They've put all their money on Pluto and the collective subconscious. So they're heavy, heavily giving you all the, the perverted pedo symbols and the, the Mandela affected symbolism they're throwing at you. So they're perverting the symbolism. They've got everybody focused on identity. Nobody, the whole freaking world, we have about two generations two to three generations that are going through a major identity crisis because they're listening to the freaking television and the radio to tell them who they are instead of know thyself. Take up your cross and follow him daily and know yourself. Once you know yourself, then you can be, begin to learn and understand the world around you and what this construct is. Then you know when you're dealing with a person, you're not dealing with that body. You're not even dealing with that mind that is talking and communicating with you. I, I immediately get my higher self to go in before me and make the way. Announce I'm coming. Take control of the situation. That's what they've been doing to you. They send their lead out, which is the radio and the television. Funny television. <laughs> a tail, a T-E-L-E, -E, a tail. It's a pyramid. It's a natural pyramid. It's a, a freak, what we would call a freaking sand dune. A sand dune in the Middle East is called a tail. A natural occurring pyramid. So tell a vision. That's a tall tale indeed for a, for the age of fish tales here. That's what Pisces is. I call it fish tales. And uh, man, my last boyfriend, he was the major fish tale. He loved to go fishing, and it wasn't even fishing that he enjoyed. It was after the fact coming back and the lies that he could tell about the ones that got away. And it was always a thing between him and his friends as who could tell the biggest lie and get away with it, convince others that it actually happened. So he would spend the entire time in the boat, didn't give a damn if he caught a fish or not. He just wanted to get drunk, ride around in the boat, and think of what lie he was going to tell. And like that gave him some status or something. It made no sense to me whatsoever. But I get the fish tales being told in this age. And the biggest fish tales come from the pulpit itself. And y'all know how I feel about being pulled to the pit and altered. So, wow, this video is getting a little long. An hour again, I feel like I've been here for 10 or 15 minutes, and I never, I haven't even finished what I started saying, which was about the light, and where's the light coming from, and how it projects, and how is that light manifest in there.
And when you meditate, think on these things, meditate on these things. You know, a lot of people teach meditation. You just get everything out of your mind. You go blank. You go silent. That's hard to do for a lot of us whose minds never stop. That chatter of monkeys going on 24-7. I've got 50 different things going on in my brain at one time. And you see them all trying to come out of my mouth at once. And it be can become a jumbled mess. And I don't know who to listen to first because I've got 50 different pictures with 50 different ideas. And they're all screaming at me trying to get in the front of the line at who's the most important information I need to speak. So I try to organize them, but my mercury is retrograde and my mind is on fire with my heart, just like you. So to back to the light. Uh, thalamus, I am the truth, I am the way, I am the Tao, I am the Tao, I am the light. Funny because the word ia, ea, ea, means I am. Uh, and ia is in everyone. I will. I am will. I am, uh, I am that I am is what is translated here. But Asher, he's telling you what tribe he is. I'm Asher. Asher is cardinal fire. I believe. And then in the Babylonian, we are told these two are Ea. So to me, they're E and A, Saturn, Ea. All right? Ea, Asher, Ea. Well, he is uh, Ea, I am the light. I am the way. I am the Tao. I'm the Tao. He's the way, the fixed cross, up the middle. Nag Hammadi, uh, the unshakable race of humanity, the immovable race of humanity. Unshakable, unmovable, stable, fixed. Learn, learn, you know, I read dictionaries when I was a kid. That's my best advice to you is freaking dictionaries and a thesaurus. Read them. Uh, my mother got so tired of me asking 150 questions an hour that why is this and why is that? Why, well, why, well, why? I could see that it's doing it, but why? She hated me. So she bought me a set of encyclopedias, world book encyclopedias, and the child craft to go with it, and the two great big dictionaries. Well, to me, those dictionaries were the bomb. They were far more informative than the rest of the books. So I spent, I was probably the only one that read those dictionaries. The other kids would pick up the child craft and tear some pages out of this and that, but the dictionaries I considered mine. They were mine. I had I had the, the source knowledge now. This is where these words come from. So I learned how to read the phonetic um, the phonetic structure. So I, I learned everything about language from a dictionary. The first few pages give you the legend of what all the symbols mean that are used in language. Everybody needs to know that. And we're taught just a handful of them. We're only taught a few of these symbols, and most of that's not taught till you get in middle school to high school, that you actually learn what these symbols mean. But I learned them in the first freaking grade. So to me, the magic books, the spell books, have always been the dictionaries, and they changed and they change the meaning of them. So the older dictionaries that you can get, you're going to get the better true meanings of them. Uh, something before 1930s, really. Uh, if you can get pre-World War I, you're on, you're on a good track. Uh, so, uh, And then I ran into Britannica encyclopedias. I was not impressed. Uh, and then by the time I hit, I guess about the fourth grade, maybe the fifth grade, right in that area, I got a hold of Funkin' Wagoner. There you go. Uh, completely different way of coming at information. Uh, just, uh, it, it blows Britannica and World Book off the map as far as, and especially an older set of Funkin' Wagoners. I don't even know if they make them anymore. I don't think they do. So if you ever get your hands on a set of those, especially, uh, introductions 
where they give you the symbology and how every the legends and how everything is laid out that's going to help you a lot uh, i would prize a set uh, an old early 1900 set of funk and wagner even though they're in my head somewhere it's a lot easier to have the book than going through my scattered mind but i know there's probably not a single person I've met in my life that could sit down and read dictionaries like I do. But I've read a lot of them in my lifetime. And to me, they're in thesaurus. Like I said, a thesaurus is going to help you out because they're going to give you words that you, that you would think have no relation to what they're really talking about. Because, I mean, when I first read the non commodity I didn't understand the unshakable race of humanity. I knew I was part of it. I got it. I got what it was coming from, but I didn't understand it at all. But when I broke the alchemical language, and now I know that, okay, unshakable, unmovable means stable in alchemy. It means fixed in astrology. It means master level in Freemasonry. Yeah. It started to all make sense then. And when I put the three sticks with the three pillars, with the three paths, with the three crosses, with Golgotha, it, everything is everything else. So if I'm looking at my heart on the cardinal cross, and I'm looking at the world heart on the cardinal cross, because this is not just me and you, this is everybody. And this is what we're dealing with right now. Each of us deal with it a different way depending on where our what our natal chart looks like and the angles in between them the angles are the angels and some angles are bad and some some angles are stable like a triangle the triangles is really considered the most stable of the uh, five platonic solids is that how they say that the five platonic solids the shapes and the triangle being the most stable and because of the way it stands and no matter how you turn it it's always on its base an equilateral triangle that is equilateral paralateral you can say that as well we're in a there are many parallel frequencies all around us there uh, are uh, you know mandela effect is weird it really is, but to me, it's like two different time. What I wouldn't call it a timeline per se. Uh, I would call it a dimension or frequencies bleeding into each other. It, we're, we're Pisces bleeding into Aquarius, and Aquarius bleeding into Pisces. When you are three degrees either side of a sign, three degrees, uh, th they mix. They mix. They're Arab. We're all in an Arab state. We're in a mixed state. Uh, America is Arab. Most people here are mixed. You find very few pure blood, any race here. There's, there's uh, something in the wood pile for pretty much all of us. Very few of us have the old original bloodlines. We're all Arab. The whole world, I would guess right now, China probably holds the largest population that has not interbred. It used to be the Americas till the colonization and the disease they brought over here that wiped out two freaking continents. The greatest plague that's ever been cast on this planet. And it was cast... on South America and North America. And they gave their life so that you could live here now. The red man gave their life. They died so you could live here now. And a lot of the tribes did not fight back. To me, the Native Americans being taken out of the Southeast really all over and forced into Oklahoma was the same as the Jews being forced into Babylon. 
and they're they're going to get their freedom, go back to their original lands, rebuild their temple, blah, 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 blah. The story repeats itself. The story repeats itself. But these aren't fire people. These are air people. Air people and cardinal earth. All right, I think I've confused y'all enough. I'm, o I'm definitely over an hour now. So, it's hard to see your own light, right? It's hard to see your own light. Because it's in your head. You are the light. You're projecting the light. Uh, your higher self, your thalamus, your pineal gland, that's all part of you. You are one. But you're divided into sections. And divided into organs in your body. But everything is controlled by above. Just like everything in our brain controls the organs in our body. So all the stars in the heavens are projecting and control everything that go on down here. And all of the stars above us are, they project their power to the stars closer to us, hence the planets, the wandering stars, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Saturn, Jupiter, Neptune, Uranus, Pluto, the sun, and the moon. All right, I'm cutting this here, people. Just trying to let y'all know where we stand. And right now, with uh, Mercury still in retrograde, I am still in limbo. But I'm getting there. And I know the right place will manifest for me at the right time. I am currently in southeastern Oklahoma on the Choctaw Reservation, um, not very far from Three Sticks. I'm in, I think, the next county over from Three Sticks. Haven't been there yet. Actually been trying to find a place around here to rent. I'm familiar with the territory and uh, everybody. I just, I used to live here. I used to live in the county that I'm now in. Uh, I'm in Latimer County, by the way. Latimer. I've lived in Latimer and LaFleur County, Oklahoma. So that's where I'm at right now. I'm between Fort Smith, Arkansas and McAllister. Oklahoma. Um, that is where they made the movie. I want to say it was True Grit. I might be mistaken about that. An old John Wayne movie. Anyway, that movie was about a trip from Fort Smith to McAllister and having to come over um, Winding Stair. Alright, people. Y'all know what to do. Be the best you can be. Uh, be the kindness, be the love, be the one in the gap. He stands in, our higher selves stand in the gap for us. We need to stand in the gap for others to just be worthy of our own self. I love y'all all so much. Yeah, I just want it to be over, but it's not over. Oh, wow. Now I'm going to make the video that I sat down here to make before I digress and distracted myself. The last video I made on the time, on the experiment time. Um, in the comments, I had one comment that kind of, I didn't know how to deal with it. So I just set it in my brain and left it alone. And because I don't have like, I don't have my computer equipment. All I got is this little thing with really nothing on it. <laughs> so I started watching Reddit. And I like Reddit humor. Uh, and I, I find it distracting and I love to laugh. And there's not too much to laugh at these days besides myself. But I happened to watch a video. What the person commented was they felt bad because... They didn't understand what I was talking about because they don't have pictures in their head. And I, I thought, well, they must not understand what I'm talking about. And I'll just address that later. And I'll put it on the shelf in the back of my mind. And then I'm watching this Reddit video where this girl and this guy are telling a story. And she's telling him in the story he lost something. And then she said to him, picture the last place, the last time you had it. And he's like, what? 
and the conversation goes on and come to find out the, the, the boyfriend has no capability to make a picture in his mind. He has no mind's eye whatsoever. And I thought, wow, now that's a coincidence and there's no such thing as coincidence because I've never heard of this until somebody just commented on my channel that they can't make a picture. And now I'm watching this Reddit video that they can't make a picture. So I decided to do a little homework and found out that this is called, let me see if I can get it right, aphastasia. Aphastasia is a medical condition that you don't see pictures in your mind. You can't say picture this. They don't have a projector. They don't have a screen. So I'm contemplating this. I've got the comment I have. I've got the Reddit video. And now I have aphantasia, a medical condition where you can't make a picture in your head. Then I'm watching Matt's video, Quantum of Conscience. And it occurred to me, are these who the NPCs really are? You know if they're not project. I'm, I'm curious, are they, they're not projecting in their mind, are they projecting in their subconscious? Is their camera just turned around backwards? Is their projector just turned around? We've all got a pineal gland. Freaking animals have a pineal gland. So, and I know my, uh, it's like dreams. She asking, you don't dream? You don't have pictures in your head when you dream? My dog dreams. Since Kelly had seizures, her dreams are off the charts. I literally can't sleep with this dog anymore. She is so noisy, kicking, fussing, clubbering, growling. Uh, sometimes she's happy, sometimes she's freaking, but she's dead asleep. And I know that there are pictures in her mind. I can put my frequency to that dog and I can literally see in her head and know what she's dreaming about. I can see the pictures she's projecting. So I know my dog does it, but I had no idea that a large or a larger percentage of the population than you would think cannot do this. So now, question time for the comment section. What do you think? Are these our NPCs? Uh, did somebody who can't project a picture in their head, are they soulless? What kind of dynamic is, is are they so calcified that it simply doesn't project? Mine projected before I came into the body. So to me, my conscious projection has nothing to do with the body. I could see before I got here. It was one of the few things I could do. Is I, 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 I knew what love was. I knew we were a collective. That I was one. I was whole. And then the first thing I was aware of here was the separation. I'd never been alone. But my vision, my perception was it was limited here uh, before i came into the body i had 360 degree vision i could see front back sideways up down all at once all at once because i was a collective and i had many eyes pointing in all directions but here i'm just one eye i can even though i have two eyes they only make one vision they pull together and that's another thing, too. Uh, it's, it's like a person who has only one eye, uh, one vision, they, they lack a depth perception because we're in a three-dimensional construct. And you're kind of left with a two-dimensional uh, thing when you've only got one eye. Uh, so the thalamus, working in coordination with the pineal gland, they have to work together. You can't get to the pineal gland without going through the thalamus. The light, the way, the truth. Give me some feedback, people, on what I just said.